everyone, today Joe and I are going to be doing a little moving Q&A. I asked if you had any questions in regards to our move. And then I thought of some, or we thought of some as well, that might help you out if you are moving. This video is going to be on like the moving part itself, and then we're going to be doing a separate video on like living on our own or living together. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of the type of questions that we are going to be talking about. So first, we just kind of wanted to give you like an overview of our moving situation and kind of the progression of how things went. Mm -hmm. Do you want to start with that or? You can go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I think it was in April-ish when yeah. we started looking at apartments. Yeah, I was looking back at old emails and I think we signed, I, I remember seeing like uh, rental quotes like price quotes in April. Mm -hmm. So I think that's when we were pretty serious about looking. Yeah. And then we looked at three places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was the second we looked at. Yeah. We knew mostly what we were looking for. So this is like our, our house hunters list. But we knew we wanted a two-bedroom, at least one and a half baths. We didn't necessarily need the second mm -hmm. shower and stuff, but Pretty much that's, most two that's how it is. Work. I also knew that I wanted to be on the top floor because of like filming purposes. I didn't want to have to deal with noise above us. There, were, there weren't really any specific things that we were looking for. I just knew that like if I walked in a place and it felt disgusting and grimy and like old, that it was like an automatic no. So I was looking for something that was fairly updated, clean. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And our place, I think all of the units in here, or most of them at least, have brand new, like updated kitchens. Mm -hmm. So that was a good plus. Although our kitchen isn't the best, but that's all right. So we were looking and then it was pretty quick that we found a place and had a lease. Yeah. and knew that we were going to move, so it went pretty quickly. Like, I don't really remember when we were like, okay, we're going to start looking now. It was kind of like, hey, let's, let's just make a weekend of going and looking at apartments, and then all of a sudden we were moving. Yeah, we really liked this place, and then, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how I recall it, at <laughs> least. Yeah, it was very gradual, um, and then sun. Yeah, pretty much after that we had, I guess it was a handful, well no, I guess we had a long time that we were waiting. Mm-hmm. It was at April, least... May, June, July. Well, it was... Seven days in July. I think it was like three months. Yeah, two and a half, three months. Or so. So that was kind of painful, <laughs> but that gave us a lot of time. That was kind of nice though, because it gave us time to like buy our stuff. Buy stuff, yeah. Pretty much after we had a lease and knew when we were moving and that we were moving, we started going ahead and buying things, which I would definitely recommend if you can. I know some people are, it's gonna be like, you might have a month before you move, so you're gonna have to buy things pretty quick. Mm -hmm. But like financially, that was nice for us to be able to kind of spread it out over a few months, but mm -hmm. I mean, we had we had everything the day we moved in, for the most part, like yeah, the things the that, things. yeah. There were some things that we ended up needing afterwards, but do you want to talk about that at all? How we physically moved, our packing situation? Oh yeah, so we started packing probably like two weeks before we were moving. So since we bought most of our stuff, it was, a lot of it was already prepackaged, so we didn't have to um, well, the furniture we just left in the boxes, so we'd move it as is instead of assembling it and then having all this big furniture to move. Um, so that was pretty easy in our situation. In terms of like all the little items we'd order, we repackaged some of them, but most of them we kept in the little boxes. So really all the packing we had to do was like our clothes, um, like toiletries and like your makeup stuff. Random things like in our desks. Yeah. So not too much packing, but... Um, with that, we started about two weeks early and we just kind of knocked it out little by little. 
um, starting with the stuff we really knew we just didn't need like I know you packed up your like winter clothes first mm -hmm. um, and with that we did um, a lot of the clothes we packed Rachel packed them in her suitcases in laundry hampers because you don't really need boxes for that but yeah we had pretty much everything for the most part packed up the day of moving um, there's a couple little stray ends and loose things that we didn't have packed up which is annoying Certain cases, if you're moving from, if you already have a place and you're moving somewhere else, you know, there will be more packing. Um, packing's always going to take longer than you think, and it's not fun. So, um, but I think for the most part, we did a really good job with that. We didn't lose anything. Nothing got broke in the move. Broken. Broken. Yeah, nothing got broken during the move because, you know, I'm a professional packer here. Um, anyways, uh, so that was pretty good. It was all pretty organized pretty well packing like things with stuff, not just throwing random things in boxes. Um, that way you don't just open a box and it's just a total mess. So kind of fit packing with unpacking in mind. Yeah, that's the number one tip that I gave my sister who just moved as well. Like make sure that like all your kitchen stuff is together. Cause for us, since we had bought everything and like a lot of things were in individual boxes and things like that, at the end there were some like straggler yeah. kind of purchases or like orders that came in so it was like there were some kitchen items with laundry stuff <laughs> and things that made it a little bit like, and you're like I looking have no idea what's in this yeah box. and you're looking for stuff and you're like and you can't find it because you have no method to the madness yeah and then move-in day you guys saw that I have a vlog all about that we just loaded up our cars didn't have to rent any trucks or anything mm -hmm. just used the cars we had packed them up and used our families as yeah, manpower, bit, yeah. which obviously not everyone can do, but people have friend. Most people have friends, you know, friends and families, and you know, the more people you have, the easier it'll be. But at the same time, it is a stressful day, so you having to manage certain people. Just be selective with the people you have. We had all good people there who were self-directed, and we didn't have to like manage a bunch of idiots. <laughs> Well, I think more than that, it's just don't have too many people. Well, yeah, but... Just... I mean, if it would have just been me and you, it would have been tough. It's finding that right balance with how much stuff you have and how big of a place you have that you're moving yeah. into. Um, I think we had just enough. Yeah, I would say so, too. One of the questions we got was, how long did we save to move out? And can we do a budgeting video? Budgeting situation has uh, not exactly been... As we planned. In terms of like how much we spent or like. Well, we plan to have a a budget. Which we have, we have a budget. It's, it's mm, a work in progress. Well, not exactly. I wouldn't say we like have a budget. Well, I have one. But well. Sort of. No, I, I, a I agree. It's a communicational issue because I don't know about this. So how long did we save to move out? What would you say? Um. Well, so yeah, we didn't have, like, kind of Rachel said, there was never like, okay, we decided we're moving out and we're going to start saving now. So if you look back at how much money we spent, how long that would have taken us to earn between the two of us. I mean, it was pretty much like when I was working, I was just working the, uh, with the intent to, like, buy our stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, probably what, how long did you work after school? Three months? It's probably, probably three months combined of our, because um, we both would have been graduated and working full time. So, mm -hmm. I would say about three months of our salary, or not our salaries, our incomes. Yeah. Um, we're able to afford us all the furniture we wanted, all the other miscellaneous stuff. And also, we started from scratch, so we didn't have a lot of the things. Yeah. We needed. Well, and we also had a good situation because neither of us were living on our own already. We had pretty much no bills. Not really. So it's it's easy to say like, oh yeah, it it was no big deal. I just I just worked and bought everything mm -hmm. because like I didn't have anything. Yeah, else. we could put all our money towards that. Yeah. So it was a very good situation. So most people, you know. You're gonna to have to budget for these things to um, budget extra money for saving. But then, other than people who are already living on their own, probably have some stuff 
yeah. to start out with. You're not gonna have to do all the big purchases. Yeah. Oh, and then we also had some money budgeted for all the move-in fees with the rent, um, since that's more expensive the first month. And then just kind of a emergency fund mm -hmm. for um, living expenses if something were to happen. So we always have some money saved up. That way we're not yeah. going paycheck to paycheck with our expenses and our rent and stuff like that. That's a pretty classic like budgeting strategy tip or strategy, but especially when you're moving out for the first time, that's really important because you never know like what's going to happen or like for us, we kind of found that we ended up needing like a lot more stuff after we moved in mm -hmm. and those aren't you're not like expecting that. So just building yeah. in that wiggle room is really mm -hmm. important. The next question is what's been the hardest thing about moving? So this is in particular to like the moving prop. We're taking it as like the moving process itself, mm -hmm. not living on our own or living together. Cause we'll talk about that in another video. You had a good thought about the hardest thing about yeah. moving. So I, I would say juggling all the different things. Um, with move-in day, scheduling, uh, we had like furniture being delivered that day, we had to go sign the lease. I know when your sister moved, she had to go like actually turn on her water. Mm -hmm. um, so there's just all these little tasks that you have to do. You still have to eat. Um, with us, we had to go pick up things from multiple places. We had stuff at your house, stuff at my house. Um, so just coordinating all that in a way that makes sense. Because like the furniture delivery, someone has to be here for that. Um, Thankfully, I was here for that because the guy pulls up with his literally like his kids and his rooms to go truck and tries to carry the couch up to the second floor. I'm like, I can help you, bro. Um, so if it would have just been you, who knows how that would go. <laughs> Probably would have went well, but saved the guys back a little bit. Um, so I'd say coordinating all that, and that can be much bigger of a challenge depending on the different circumstances when if you're combining two different people's stuff, if you have stuff in storage. Um, if you have a lot more stuff just going on or if you're really bougie and you have like a decorator and cable Like we didn't have to have the cable people there. We had to that we all did later um, So it can be really tough coordinating all those different things um, On top of the fact you're already just stressed out about a whole bunch of different things So I'd say that's probably the hardest part about moving in general unless you have Well in our situation unless you have some other extenuating circumstance like death divorce um, <laughs> Those things are make it way worse. Yeah yeah. Illness, something like that. But. Yeah. No, I would agree. Like the, the scheduling of everything and the living and dealing with the chaos. Okay, yeah, that, I think afterwards that's tough too. Yeah. Because like after everything's there and you're like, okay, we're here, all of our stuff is here, then it's like, mm -hmm. Oh my god. The unpacking, the organization. Like, I can't just live with my stuff, like, in boxes. I have mm -hmm. to, like, I'm exhausted and stressed and just want to go to sleep or cry or <laughs> barf. Yeah. Or just, yeah, yeah, any of those things. But then you're like, well, um, where are my sheets to yeah. be able to go to sleep? Yeah, there's or, all those things where you need one thing to do another thing, but that thing's packed up, so. Yeah. And you just, it's the, like, the forced work that you have to do for, like, days, mm -hmm. weeks. <laughs> yeah. Where, and obviously you're moving to a new place, so the layout is different. Like, for us, one of the big things was, like, getting the kitchen situated. That, things got moved around in there several times. Mm -hmm. But the living in chaos is... I would say that's actually probably bigger than like, a bigger one because it lasts longer. The yeah. move day, it's just one day, you just get it over. I mean, unless it's a really big move, you just, but you get it over within one day and then you're kind of done with it. But just living out, out of your routine, having extra stuff. We're both lucky that we had, like in my case, I was able to take off the ample time for work um, with my job. I have so much flexibility, so that makes it a lot easier. I had, what, three days off afterwards, mm -hmm. in addition to the day off of the move. Yeah. Um, so that made it a lot easier, but not everybody has that luxury. So then it compounds, and it takes longer to get settled in, and it also is just more stressful in general because you have more going on. That kind of leads into the next question about how long did it take to feel 
settled in and then how long did it take for things to like find a place or to just get organized? So I'd say to get settled in about two weeks. Um, just feeling comfortable, feeling like this is actually our place and this is where we live. See, I felt like that within a few days. Yeah, no, I, it took a while for me. Hmm. Well, and settled in just, I guess, I guess that feeling came sooner, but settled in in the sense of that we're not living in chaos. Yeah, yeah. I'd say two weeks or so. Uh, to get everything finished or put in its place, that was a lot longer. I'd say that's probably <laughs> a month, in five weeks or so. Yeah. I mean, little things. I mean, you got, I heard this saying that you get like 90% of the stuff done within the first three days and then the other 10% never gets done. So I said that was pretty true. We probably got 95% of stuff done in the first week. But then there was like the office was a straggler mm -hmm. and then like hanging up all our art. Um, yeah. I'd say for the most part though, we had like things in their place quick. Because you have to be. If you're going to actually be actively living in the space that you just moved into, it has to be put away and, and like in functional spaces to mm -hmm. make it work. What we noticed, and I've kind of like touched on this already, is that like there's so many things that you don't realize that you need or things that are like specific to your place. Like we didn't expect to have like our entryway furniture and I'm trying to think of if there was any other furniture. Like we didn't have a lot of our office stuff when we first moved in, but quickly realized like, oh, that's a big space that we need to fill. Mm -hmm. Or like artwork things. So there's a lot that like kind of trickles in yeah. as you realize that you need it. And so that like prolongs the process. Like we're still waiting on some artwork mm -hmm. that goes in our dining, dining room. room. But yeah. for the most part, everything else, is set and it feels like it's done like it doesn't feel like we're oh, yeah. waiting on anything no and it's been what almost a month over a month and a half almost two yeah months. just shy of two months so i think that's reassuring so one question that we kind of skipped over when we were talking about uh like the Purchases. furniture buying process and just all of our purchases was kind of how we we're able to save some money or just be like smart shoppers. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I personally did because I was the one who was buying the majority of the stuff I would say, um, is mm -hmm. like if you have, and obviously like do this within reason, but if you have like a credit card that's gonna be earning points, use that for your big items. Like I got back a decent amount of money just by using my credit card on things and that's why I was the one who was purchasing a lot of the stuff just to get that money back I mean only if it's a few dollars it's a few dollars mm -hmm. also we used Ebates on a bunch of stuff I would say we got upwards of $200 yeah. back on all of our purchases and that's just money that you just get free for money. free so also just even simple things like shopping online and knowing what the best prices were yeah that was a big thing are. like i took a lot of time for every single little item looking up what was the best quality for the least mm -hmm. or lowest price and, and at different stores even though it's the same thing mm -hmm. there's a couple like the dining room set we found at walmart right yeah that was it was somewhere else we found it first and then just by through Google searching, found it for like what three hundred dollars cheaper or something. Yeah, something, something like really crazy. Plus, then we got the Ebates money on that. That I think one thing we could have done better, or not done better, but I think we noticed to the end was like thrift storing some of the things. Like <laughs> some of the at the end, we got a couple really great things at the um, Salvation Army, um, just for little odds and ends that you des might not necessarily need new. Mm -hmm. Of course, certain things you don't want to buy like. I mean, depending on your preferences, your situation, you know, you might not want to buy um, a couch used. Um, so those things you want to buy new, but kind of picking and choosing what you can afford to buy new versus used. But shopping the thrift stores because there is a lot of great deals mm -hmm. on Especially, that. Especially, mostly like kitchen things. Yeah, I think that would be the big thing. That you can just put in the dishwasher and like blast away the germs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
things that are easy, easily cleanable or like artwork or yeah. decorative type things. Pieces of wood furniture. But just things like that and I mean like reading reviews and yeah i think that's big like you said buying quality too mm -hmm. i think pretty much for everything we haven't had anything really break on it i mean i know it's only been like two months but um pretty much everything we bought is really high quality which i think is gonna mm -hmm. um especially the things that you know you're gonna use for a long time your vacuum cleaner well i was gonna say you need to know what to splurge on as well there's certain things that i wouldn't care enough about to splurge on mm -hmm. but like you said like things that you're using a lot i was we spent a little bit more money on or if you're like i really really want this sort of look or i really want these glasses like we kind of splurged on our dinnerware type stuff a little bit more like mm -hmm. our plates and cups and stuff like that but at the same time i also bought a set of mason jar type glasses for like 10 mm -hmm. bucks or something so you can get cute stuff on a budget, but also, like you said, like we splurged on our vacuum because I really wanted a particular one, and yeah. it works amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of what else. Our mattress. It's, yeah, our mattress. I think, it's a big one. I think that with in terms of furniture, is splurging on the ones that you know that are going to fit wherever you go. Mm -hmm. um, so certain pieces like. For example, um, a big one is like entertainment centers or like a TV stand. A lot of times in like our apartment, we couldn't mount our TV, so we had to buy this entertainment center or TV stand. It's not really a enter big entertainment center. It's a small little one. Um, but we might not need that in our next place. So mm -hmm. if we spend a lot of money on it, we're probably not going to be able to resell. My camera just overheated, but we will continue the yeah. conversation. So, um Spending money on things like a mattress, which no matter where you go, you're going to want to have a good mattress versus maybe something where it might not fit your space. Um, a lot of times couches are either too small or too big when you go to different places. Um, entertainment centers, you might not need them if you mount your TV or um, dining and kitchen sets. You, know, you might have a, a more of a formal dining room and need a bigger table or you might have a smaller one and need more of like a kitchenette table. Um, so I'd say kind of spending your money wisely on that. Or just in general with styles, you might, um, the style of your furniture might not fit your next place. So mm -hmm. spending money on those things that you know you're going to use in the future, for sure. Yeah. Well, and also, I guess, depending on how long you're planning on staying where you are. That's a, that's a good Like point. for us, we, I don't see us here more than two years. Mm -mm. No. So, and that's like, on the long end yeah but I think that's more like on the realistic side of things maybe like a year and a half ish so I didn't want something that was gonna be like a mix match random mm -hmm. situation because like we are gonna be living here for a, a year while. plus but I'm not gonna go spend I don't know two thousand dollars on like a nice couch I think that's about it for mm -hmm. this section if you still have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments mm -hmm. down below our next video that we're gonna film I don't know if that'll be today or tomorrow or when we'll do it it's gonna be all about like living on our own and living together I think that that will be an interesting one yeah spill all the tea there because I've got some things to say about oh gosh living <laughs> Oh, Living yeah. with Joe and with Can a partner this? in general. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I hope this was helpful for any of you who are moving out and that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Bye everyone. What, Joe? Nothing. Oh my gosh. It's been a while since we've done this. You kill me. Alrighty. Ooh. You gotta do it too. Hey everyone, today. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be fired. I'm just gonna focus on how buff my arms look. Okay. See, now you're laughing. <laughs> I'm totally good. Because I'm looking at you being like...
Hey everyone, today Joe and I. <laughs> that was, I know, not that awkward. Don't say it like that. Why? What do you Feel mean? Feel how sweaty my palms are. Here. Hey everyone, today Joe and I. <laughs> Sorry, one more time. I really got it out there. I hate you. <laughs> You're so annoying. Why are you doing this to me? Man, you better not start weed eating right now. Hey everyone, today Joe and I. <laughs> That's oh you. Oh my god. That's you. Why? 